Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little loud. Those sounds you like to hear. We got it going on. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. Hey folks, welcome back to the Oddcast Podcast, where we talk to people who are turning their passion into profession and subsequently their passion into paychecks. We have a very special guest today coming to us from Boston. We got Josh Ban, owner and founder of Plate Crate in the building. Josh, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good and uh, awesome intro. I love the energy. Like right away, you turned up the energy in the place, and I love it. So it's uh, it's uh, thank you for having me on. I'm excited to to get started. You got to have that energy. I feel like I mean, I, well, I mean, listen, I mean, as a founder of you know a company, especially in this marketplace where it's kind of like guerrilla marketing all the way, you got to have that energy. So I know you're all about that. <laughs> it is energy. Energy goes a long way. Energy and honesty. Get after it. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Absolutely. But I digress. Um, we got to talk about we got to talk about plate crate, and we, basically we got to talk about you as well. So, Josh, I, I, you know, I hate the dreaded twenty thousand foot question, but we always got to ask kind of what what is plate crate? Where can they find plate crate? And what's it all about? And then kind of like how did it get started? And you know, how did how did you kind of get the inspiration for it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love talking about it. It's super it's super fun to look back. Um, yeah, basically, I you know I was playing I was playing independent ball, which is like if you don't know what independent ball is, that's like a whole separate podcast. But it's basically like minor <laughs> league ball, um, you know, not affiliated with major league baseball. But I was I was traveling around, and uh, minor leaguers just don't they don't get paid very well. That's not why you play baseball in the minor league. So um, you know, it was a winter. I was home, um, and I did like personal training and uh, and lessons and shoveling snow and like all this stuff to just kind of make ends meet so I could play baseball and. Um, I just had kind of a late night Google session and I, you know, I saw subscription boxes were, uh, kind of becoming a trend. Uh, so I saw Birchbox box and all these different things. And I was like, you know, there might be one for baseball. Um, I'd love to see what that looks like. I would be interested in it personally. Um, so I Googled it and I just like, couldn't believe there wasn't anything there. And, uh, so I had like a little light bulb moment and I said, that's something, that's something I could do. That's something I could start. I know baseball retail from, uh, working in batting cages my whole life. Uh, working for a batting cage franchise, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a project I was really excited. And I thought, you know, success at that point would be like if I could make like an extra, you know, one or two grand a month while I was playing baseball to kind of subsidize my income, I'd be super pumped. So uh, that's kind of like the inception story. That's how it started. That's where the idea came from, and then it kind of blossomed from there. That's 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 awesome. First of all, I mean, that was an excellent summary. I could tell that you've uh, <laughs> you've done the elevator talk before. Um, yeah, 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 but that's super interesting. I mean, I feel like that's always kind of a, one of the most inherently successful things is when someone identifies something in the marketplace that they would have purchased if it were there and then they realize it's not there and they're like, Whoa, now I can be the person to provide what I would have purchased. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, definitely. I mean, I, I think kind of where you find things of value is when you combine, when you combine, uh, you know, two things that you're good at, not just one. So. I knew baseball and I really, really wanted to learn subscription, um, you know, models. I wanted to learn, uh, kind of the business model behind it. So when you kind of attach those two together, that's when you find something that's differentiated. And, uh, you know, that's true in a lot of different industries, but, um, I really knew baseball retail and if I could attach it and learn as much as I could about subscriptions, that's kind of the sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you said, uh, you know, and you are totally right. Independent league ball is Literally, we could we could have a whole series of pod, we could have a series of podcasts about in, independent league ball. I mean, yeah, it's a world of its own. Yeah, um, it really is. Yeah, yeah, what, like just you know, not to give you another open ended twenty thousand foot summary, but kind of like, could you could you break down like what independent league ball is in in an, in a nutshell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to. I love giving you know indie ball like some exposure too. So absolutely, um, independent ball is professional baseball. That's not. Um, associated with Major League Baseball. So Major League Baseball is an organization. Uh, they have teams that are part of their organization. They have minor league teams that are part of, uh, you know, those bigger teams. Independent uh, baseball is just a different league. Um, the same thing that, you know, when there were two big baseball leagues, it was American League and National League. Um, eventually they merged and they became Major League Baseball, but they used to be just two separate leagues. 
Um, that's an independent ball is, and it's much smaller, but, um, you know, you get a lot of guys that, you know, might have just got released. They go to independent ball. They play for a little bit. They get picked back up. Um, or people that might not have got drafted um, out of college. They go play indie ball. Then they get picked up. So it's uh, it, it really is a world of its own. But um, people love baseball in this country. So, you know, when you're two hours away from a major league stadium, uh, that's where you tend to see minor leaguers and minor league stadiums and, and everything. So Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I, I, I totally know what you're talking about too, where like, I, I, I respect that so much too, like indie league, like of that's, that's kind of the personification of like never giving up on the dream. Like just, just continuing, like you said, uh, making ends meet in the off season, any way you can, whether it's shoveling snow or starting a subscription box mm-hmm. company and anything in between. Um, and yeah. that's like the ultimate epitome of, you know, passion to paychecks or passion to profession. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say paychecks in the indie league. Right. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pa- passion to profession, and and you know, I I uh, I do have to commend you for like you know just chasing that passion, and and I mean it sounds like inherently the evolution of plate crate kind of came naturally. It sounds in a weird way. Yeah, so it was one of those things. Like um, I just always knew I was going to start a business. Um, uh, you know, my dad has had his own business. His dad had his own business. We were like a pretty entrepreneurial family um, already. They had service based businesses. Um, so he's an accountant, um, but uh, but it was just one of those things I always knew. And it was actually, you know, this is like a business podcast. People love to read. We can get into books because that's kind of the, you know, the, the media that I like to consume. Um, but, uh, but yeah, when I went to college, I just had, I was like, there's three professions. There's like accountant, lawyer, doctor. Like what else are you going to be in the world? And I just didn't realize that you could do, um, you could do whatever you wanted. You know what I mean? And no one ever told you that. So I go into college thinking I'm going to be a physical therapist. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a baseball player. I love, you know, working on the body, learning about the body. That seems like a really nice career. And then, um, you know, some books kind of opened my eyes. I was like, you know what? I don't have, I don't have to do that at all. Um, I can kind of do whatever I want, lead my own path, as long as I can put food on the table. Uh, you know, I'm happy. I'm young. And, you know, I can, I have the ability to take on risks when you're that young. So, uh, so yeah, it, it was, it was very organic, but I always knew it was going to happen. So, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, well, there's something to be said for that. Um, I mean, I think your your inherent, you know, like the inherent business tactician is always there, especially because you said it runs in the family. But I mean, the fact of the matter is you're also providing like an awesome value to people. And, you know, like specifically the subscription box industry is something that I do not, as a, I'm, I'm a layman in terms of that industry. Um, yeah. That must be really interesting about like, kind of like choosing what's in the box um, kind of like setting the price points of that. It must be completely unique. And, uh, you know, I, I wonder, do you, ha- do you take cues from other people within the industry or is it totally unique to within baseball? Oh no, it is like, it's super big. You want to leverage everyone else's understanding of the industry. You know what I mean? We don't have like, we don't have huge data to fall back on. Uh, there's always new industry practices and we've definitely kind of gone, our own way and we've tested things and we've tested assumptions and we've seen what works specifically for our business, but there's definitely overarching principles that are true, um, you know, for subscription boxes right now and subscription companies and SaaS companies right now. Um, and the thing is, it's still such a new industry, so there's so much more learning to, to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had so much help. I have, I have mentors, I have consultants, um, I have friends, I have like, it's, it really is when you start something by yourself and you have a really lean team, um, you know, you do need to leverage the knowledge of everybody else. You need to ask questions. And I've been fortunate enough to make really great connections, really great friends um, by just asking people, um, asking for their help, helping them. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of how we've grown and, and kind of expedited that learning process because uh, you are kind of on an island by yourself. When you start off by yourself, you're in an office alone. There's no one to talk to. So, Lots of reading, lots of podcasts, lots of books, um, you know, and then eventually, um, you know, I got some really amazing mentors. They just kind of steer you in the right direction. Um, and then you go put in the groundwork, you know what I mean? But it's, it's really nice to have people steer you in the right way and, uh, and just, you know, keep up to date with kind of, uh, you know, what's going on in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. You said leveraging information. That, that's something that uh, for me is very near and dear to what I do, I feel like. And it's something that, you know, in this day and age, I think a lot of times we look at social media, uh, we as the, you know, the grand we, but, uh, you know, social media is looked at as kind of negative. I think that, you know, 
brands like Plate Crate and, you know, for me in particular, uh, we've been able to use social media in such a positive way. And uh, mm-hmm. especially within the baseball community, I mean, goodness gracious, the baseball community uh, just on the internet and on IG specifically is strong as heck. And uh, could you speak to yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, number one, I don't like, no, I don't think anything's good or bad. You know what I mean? Um, good point. Social media is social media. Um, people people can make it into what they want, um, but uh, it's it's an opportunity for a brand to showcase themselves and just a different way for us to communicate and engage with our fans, our customers, our listeners, everything. So, you know, for us, um, it's just a reflection of your company. You know what I mean? If you have a company that's negative, you're going to reflect negatively on that. If you have a company that supports um, being positive and having great community and, and engagement, you're gonna you're gonna have that. So, um, yeah, we try to cultivate that as po- as much as possible. And you know, in in terms of like kind of our little baseball niche on uh, Instagram and social media, um, you know, it, we're all stronger together. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. A rising tide, you know, raises all ships, kind of thing. So, um, you know, we're all working together. I'm non competitive with anybody. I love every baseball brand. Um, you know, even if there's another baseball subscription box. Um, it kind of brings more awareness to baseball subscription boxes as a whole. And um, so I don't I don't see anyone as competition for us, which means we're open to collaborate with everybody and support everybody and, and be behind everyone in the industry uh, because we all love baseball. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. We love baseball. Baseball is a game. It's like it shouldn't be that serious. Like it's something we do <laughs> um, to enjoy and to be with our family and friends. And like it's something that should add to your life, not take away from it. And, uh, you know, some people take it so seriously. And, uh, and it's not. It's a game. Like it, we're meant to enjoy it. And, um, you know, play creates just an extension of the game. It's another extension of something that you can do to uh, enhance the hobby that you love. And uh, that's what we want. We want to bring in a community. We want to support people's interests and hobbies. And just give them a place where they can explore that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I think one thing that comes off with Plate Crate that's so special, of course, is being that you have such a strong relationship with baseball, and you literally like played indie league ball. Uh, that just inherently is going to make the box like completely baseball related. Like, it's not from like. It, it, we were talking about this a couple of days ago when we spoke on the phone, but it's not just some like businessman who never played ball kind of <laughs> just like trying to make a bottom yeah. line off some, you know, off, off selling some box. It's someone who's yeah. trying to provide value to other baseball players because he played baseball. He understands what people need or what people might want to uh, improve their game or make their bat better or, you know, do anything, anything. And so I think that's something that, uh, is really cool, and that's what we kind of get to exemplify from having you on the podcast and and getting to talk about like your background. Um, so I guess that, that that would lead me into my next question, which would be, I mean, how does you know your baseball background um, just kind of inform you in terms of plate crate, like like what you put? I mean, anything from what you put in the box to how you run the business to kind of how you just live your life as Josh. Yeah, I mean, great question. I'd love to talk about all that. Um, you know, uh, you know, we have a really authentic voice. I was a baseball nerd growing up. <laughs> like, I was in the cages every single day. Um, I was obsessed with baseball. I'm undersized, as you might not tell from me sitting down, but I'm like five eight. I was second baseman, so I, you know, I always had, I always had the work ethic. Um, I was always like, you know what? I'm not six feet. I have to work a little bit harder. But like I have complete control over that, and that's what I love doing. I love going to the cages. I love um, you know learning baseball, and um, you know this is kind of my contribution back. Um, you know, obviously, yes, I do. Like this is my living. This is how I make money. Um, you know, this is what supports me. Um, but it's really cool that I get to give back. I want to kind of give people the limited amount of knowledge that I've gained. Um, you know, all the great. Um, advice I've got from my teammates and the experience that I've had and just share that and kind of raise the game as a whole. And, um, you know, there's so many things, obviously hindsight's 2020, I would do different. If I could go back, there's different things I'd be, um, you know, interested in. There's different way that I'd hit. There's different way I'd approach things. Um, so, you know, I want to get back. That's, it's definitely a core piece of play crate. Um, uh, you know, as I want our authentic baseball voice to come, you know, across as this is a place where, if you were like me when I was, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, I would have gone crazy for this. I, I'm my ideal customer, you know, 10 years ago. 
Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean that, that definitely plays into it. And then in terms of, of, of business, the things that I've learned from playing is, is just being, uh, being a good teammate. Um, so, I mean, that was something I learned later in my career. I've, I've been talking about that a little bit more, but it, it kind of clicked in the end of the career that, um, if you are the absolute best teammate you can be, you care about your teammates more than anyone. You pick them up all the time. You're that go-to teammate. That's being number one, a leader. Uh, but that also, I've never won more games. I've never had more fun playing baseball. Um, I've never succeeded more um, when I didn't put the pressure on myself, but I put it on, um, you know, my teammates and just making sure they're taken care of. And what starts to happen is something really crazy is if you try to take care of yourself, you have one person that's behind you yourself. If you take care of the 20 guys on your team, you got 20 guys behind you now. Wow. And the energy... The energy raises, everything raises, um, and that's when you start to see teams clicking and camaraderie coming around, and, and you have so much more fun. And when you have fun, you play, you know, you play better, you play loose. Um, so that was that was kind of the you know the light bulb moment for me, and then that's carried on into business like a one to one ratio. Um, I love I love my team here, and I can't not call them anything else but my team. I don't have you know employees. I have teammates. Um, we just went out for lunch before this. We all went out to lunch together. We're walking around. We're having a good time. We lift weights together. Uh, we have fun. I'm, I'm, I'm so fortunate that the people that I work with are, are great people. And, you know, me as kind of the leader of the team, um, you know, the goal is to make sure they're happy. They're taken care of. They're supported. Um, they know that I'm behind them 100%. Um, so they have tons of autonomy. And then, uh, you know, they want to work hard for me, this person. That's, that's, you know, you have to be um, genuinely um, committed to that kind of, um, team mentality. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's an environment also that you cultivate and it's, it's very interesting of, I've never really heard someone exactly articulate, you know, if you're looking out, if you're, if you're taking care of number one, then you got number one behind you. But if you're taking care of 20, then you got 20 behind you. I've never heard someone articulate that in such a way. So that's very, very, that's, that's awesome. That's, it sounds like you are, yeah. that's, that's a, that's a culture that you almost have to cultivate. Yeah, and I mean it's 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 being on a team, and that's why that's what people love about baseball. That's what people love about football. Like the sport is fun. Yes, it's fun to hit a ball. It's fun to try around the bases. <laughs> um, but you know, twenty years later, thirty years later, you just talk about the stupid things you do in the dugout, or like the funny times that you have with your buddies. And um, you know, it's easy for me to reflect on that because I'm out of it. I have some perspective, mm -hmm. um, and I have some time away from the game. But um, yeah, man, looking back, like I just I had such good friends. I still have great friends and. And now we're kind of moving on with our lives and going into, you know, weddings and kids and that whole thing. And I'm just so, uh, so happy and so lucky I had them. Um, and those are the things you remember. I don't remember going, you know, four for four or over for four. I just, you know, remember I had great teammates and we had a blast playing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those like, those like bus trips where, you know, you weren't able to grab a shower and everyone's just goofing off at each other and, you know, and just <laughs> like late yeah. night terrible no sleep but the camaraderie is just like absolutely magnificent and almost it almost magical it's like you'll never be able to like recreate it but you always have it and that's so special yeah and i mean honestly like indie ball life is is like very similar to startup life you're grinding you're <laughs> you know you're you're low budgeted you're fighting together you you have this like general like mission together and uh yeah indie ball life we lived in hotels we lived in you know cars we drove around the country um and you do it for you know the for the same purpose and we have someone next to you that that's with you on that mission all the better and it's the same same thing that's true when you're starting a business yeah yeah that's 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 really awesome i mean you know time and time again uh, getting getting the pleasure of talking to you know different ball players who played in different leagues and levels uh i've definitely like heard very similar responses you know like the the camaraderie is what makes the sleepless nights and 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 the <laughs> ridiculous living situations all worth it. And, you know, like, like you said, you know, going over four or four for four, it's like, you're not going to remember that in 30 years at all. Um, it doesn't matter, man. Yeah. Like some of the, some of the worst thing that, some of the worst things that's happened to us are like the funniest <laughs> stories now. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, you're, it's, they're, they're funny now. And they're, they're things you can always look back on and something that, you know, no one can kind of take away from you. So it's, it's definitely fun to look back on that and see where, you know, everyone is today. Yeah, exactly. And and like you were saying, I mean, I'm sure that initially starting up in in the business and in, in Play Crate, um, you know, you probably made some missteps that, you know, seemed 
colossal at the time, but now you probably look back and like joke about with the team in a way. Um, so I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I mean, and, and to be honest, I'm still making a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And, uh, and I think kind of the mentality shifted to where now I know I'm going to make mistakes. So uh, you can kind of practice a little bit of stoicism with it and kind of be prepared um, because it's overwhelming at first uh, when things start to unravel. Um, so I kind of shifted from mistakes and now they're called expensive lessons. So it's like they, <laughs> they, you know, every, every, like everything's a learning opportunity. Um, it's part of growing a business. It's inevitable. You will never grow your business on the trajectory that you ever thought. Um, we've lost tons of money, but we've tried a lot of things. You know what I mean? And we've tested tons of stuff and I spent lots of money on content that was just horrible. And then I made a piece of content that took 30 seconds on my iPhone and it's the best piece of performing contents. You just don't know. You can't have that intuitive feel that I have for my business after four or five years without making really big mistakes testing. Um, and then honestly kind of building up that entrepreneurial armor um, around that and just saying, you know what, we've been here before. It's a different situation. Um, you know, let's, let's put one step in front of the other. Let's come up with an action list and get out of it as soon as possible. So, um, yeah, it's, it is a, it's essential. You can't grow without it. Yeah. That's, I mean, I like how you say, I, one of, one of the first interviews I ever did with uh, a guest, uh, he said, we don't take losses. We learn lessons. And yeah. <laughs> like you said, they they could be expensive lessons, but I mean, you know, what's the, you know, the famous Albert Einstein quote, and I'm going to fudge this up, of course, but he said, I haven't, I haven't failed. I've just learned a thousand ways not to do it correctly. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and as long as I, I, you know, you used another term that I've never really heard the entrepreneurial armor. Um, goodness gracious. Like I, you know, my ability to upload at, uh, from my, my studio has been hampered and hindered for the past couple of weeks. And, uh, yeah, even on my Instagram, I haven't been able to add people for whatever reason. Every time I add someone, it doesn't allow me to. Um, but yeah. you know, uh, I don't mind. And you know, you just roll with the punches. And I think, uh, yeah. that's kind of, you know, you just, if you get caught up on something as small as that, then the overall vision is going to go to waste. Yeah. And I mean, there was, there was something that, you know, I've kind of adopted a long time ago and, uh, it kind of switches everything on its head. Anything that ever happens to my business is always my fault. Everything. If my employee quits, it's my fault. If my employee messes up, it's my fault. If, if, if the stock market crashes, it's my fault. And I can explain that. I'm not prepared. I need to be, be, be prepared emotionally. I need to be prepared, you know, for, you know, funding or whatever we do. But, uh, everything that touches my business, anything that has play crates name on it or mine, that's my fault. Every time, 10 out of 10, no questions asked. Um, wow. But it's good. Because, and I have no one to, um, you know, it's not about blaming. It's just saying, cool, this is my responsibility every time. Now it's time to work out of it. Um, so I actually have, um, I have a sign in my room and uh, it just says begin. And uh, it was like a quote. Um, I forget what it was. I think it was like Andy Weir's book, like Mars, which was turned into a movie. But um mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was like Matt Damon said, like in the movie, like if, if everything goes wrong and all this, there's only one thing to do, begin. And I was like, man, I love that because you just, so I actually, I, I, I kept writing on it, but above um, begin, it says take, because I, I had to take a breath a lot of the times so when things go wrong. So I'm like, take a breath and just start. You might not know where to start, but you have to start to fix the problem. And, uh, and yeah, those came from expensive lessons. So, I mean, I have, I have a lot of little things up on my wall in my office. Um, and, and, uh, begin is like only one you really need to know to start in any business or fix any problem or start learn any skill. Um, you have to begin, um, or nothing's going to get done. So yeah, it's, it's, everything's my fault. And then anytime something goes wrong, take responsibility and just begin fixing it. That's, that's really powerful. I mean, I, I, you know, I, first of all, I'm a, I, didn't that didn't that actually? It was a book that started as like blog posts. I have no idea, but I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's a good movie. Yeah, that, that book that is powerful. Yeah, that book started as someone who was like post, like it was just kind of on like a Reddit type of like they were posting like these hypothetical blog posts of like what would have happened yeah. if, 
and then it turned into a book, became the number one bestseller, and then they made it into a movie. So this guy was just, That's cool. yeah, talk about yeah, beginning. I, I mean, that. if he had never yeah. begun and begun posting those blogs and then didn't pick up the phone call when someone was saying, hey, I want to turn this into a book, I mean, it would have yeah. never happened for him. I mean, so I think there's something really powerful to that. And, you know, we always talk passion to paychecks on the program. And I was, you know, one of the things I always like to ask is advice, which we, we'll get to at the very end. But I think this touches yeah. on this touches on that um, is that so many people like I think that I think the person with the greatest ideas, you know, for every single business may not even be practicing in that field. They might not have begun. They might just have the idea and never put it mm -hmm. into action. And yeah, I think there's something so powerful. I mean, that's why Nike's just do it is so universal. Um, I know it's, it's great. And that was a great book. Shoe dog. Oh yeah. Jeez Louise. Man. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it definitely is you, I like how you address it also in terms of addressing problems. Um, you know, you can fret on the problem, but that's not going to solve the problem. Like you have mm -hmm. to address the problem, um, kind of fix it and then see how you don't engage, uh, encounter that problem in the future. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that, I know I've talked about this with other baseball, uh, you know, people and personalities, but the fact of the matter is you can have a 300 batting average and go to the hall. I mean, you, you yeah. got to do it over a course of 15 years, but like that means that you're failing seven out of 10 times theoretically. Right. And yeah. so, you know, the fact of the matter is in baseball, it's so much like life Like you're going to be. The, the, the successes are going to be a little bit less than the failures. I mean, but failures aren't just that. They're lessons and they're, they're stories. And it's not necessarily always about the end destination. It's kind of how you got there. The journey is really the important thing sometimes. And I think yeah. baseball and, you know, indie league ball has probably taught you to have uh, a thick skin. And like you said, you know, being, being a 5'8 guy playing second base, you probably have that chip on your shoulder of like, how can I get better? How can I you know, work out specific things or, you know, analytically study the game to, you know, be in the right position. And I think that's going to yeah. inherently translate in uh, the business, which it has. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to speak to that, like I don't, everyone, everyone thinks of things as being binary. It, if it's not good, it has to be bad. If it's not bad, it has to be good. That's not true at all. Good and bad are just a perspective um, on the situation. Um, and you don't really know what that perspective is until you have time to step away from it and really see it for what it's worth. Um, something I would call a mistake five months ago is, is, is a huge success right now um, because it might have led me down a path that would take away from something that's working for us now. So, um, you know, good and bad, uh, you know, there some nothing's ever good or bad. You need perspective. You need time to really see how that affects your business and you. And I think people are way too quick to say, so this thing happened, it's bad. This thing happened, it's good. It's not good or bad. It's just something that happened objectively. Um, and you need to go one or two different ways um, to approach it. So I would advise people, you know, stop labeling things. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, that's a really powerful sentiment. Um, you know, just exactly. To, to label something as purely good or purely bad is, is, is a simplification that can actually, uh, you know, hinder, hinder our perspective. And I mean, everything is much more complex than just good or bad. Everything is much, that's the one thing I definitely learned in going to law school. Um, you know, I thought I was going to go there and really understand the law and kind of get a black and white, you know, perspective on the law. It's like, dude, yeah. that, that's, that's when you realize that there is no black and white to the law. That's when you realize, you know, you, you better have a good lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I lost my, I lost my lights. There, there we you go. go. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, being a lawyer. It's all gray area. That's why there's lawyers. If it was black and white, we wouldn't need lawyers. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it's all gray. Everything's gray. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and like you said, I mean, it's not necessarily what happens to you. It's how you respond to it. Um, mm. And <clears throat> excuse me. That being said, um, you know, I think there's a very, you know, how, did, how does being in Boston kind of influence you? I know you're, you guys are based out of Boston. Um, Boston's very, yeah. Boston has, you know, the very like, kind of like fighting mentality. Um, you know, you, you get, you get the, you get the, you get the like Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, especially in this day and age, yeah. now that both guys are so yeah. popular, but, uh, you know, how does that influence you as a person and as a businessman? 
Yeah, man. You know what? It's so weird. No one's ever asked me that question. People always ask me a lot about Boston. Um, I'm really proud uh, to be a Bostonian. You know what I mean? And I didn't even I didn't grow up in Boston. I grew up 20 minutes north um, in Peabody, Massachusetts. I lived in Salem, Massachusetts, so like the witch trials. That's where our warehouse is currently, and we're moving it. Um, and now I live in Boston, and uh, you know I'm in a we work in Boston right now. But um, but yeah, I mean Boston is very much like you can personify it. Um, you know, people. There's so much history here. Number one, um, I you know my family has so much history here. They came over, you know, they immigrated. We've been in Boston ever since. So uh, yeah. we've never moved. You know, in the last you know, a couple hundred years, um, you know, away from the Boston area. So uh, we, I have this really unique personal experience where, uh, you know, my my friends are actually kind of like third generation friends. Our parents were friends. Our parents' parents were friends. Wow. Um, and, we all, and we all grew up in the same area. And, you know, no one no one leaves, which is has pros and cons. You definitely need to get out. You need to go travel. That's like <laughs> another story. Like you have to leave <laughs> to gain perspective. But, uh, yeah, I'm like so – proud to be part of Boston, um, you know, with the marathon, with, um, you know, with the Red Sox. Um, my, my family's had tickets, uh, season tickets at Fenway since 1970. So, um, you know, growing up, going to Fenway was like, it was just super ingrained in me, um, yeah. just like Boston sports culture. Um, and, you know, back then was, it was way more accessible. My dad tells me stories is like, you know, 50 cents for a ticket to bleachers. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's not only a part of, of, you know, baseball history, it's part of American history. Um, it's part of kind of our city where we came from. Um, yeah, and I'm just, I'm super proud to be part of it. I really want people to know Play Crate is a Boston company. We're in Boston. We love Boston. Um, it's where I'm from. It's where my family's from. It's where my friends are from. It's, I'm super proud of it. And, um, you know, I think it's a fantastic city. Yeah, it, it really is. Boston is a terrific city. And now I, I got to ask you, best best food spot in Boston for the, for an out of towner to go to. And I know I'm, I know I'm simplifying it, but you list off a couple. I mean, I know, I know, you know, you have the typical, you know, got to go to legal seafood and such, but, uh, you don't know, go to exactly. <laughs> see, legal seafood, but it's a, it's a, it, they're a little bit bigger now. It's a little bit of a chain. If it's you a want, tourist trap. So I'm going to give you guys for everyone that's not in Boston. This is something I'm super passionate about. This is a North shore thing. North Shore, kind of on the south, so north of Boston, south Boston. Uh -huh. um, you know, the most local food you can eat is a roast beef sandwich. No one will tell you to do that. No one will ask you to do that. You need to go get a roast beef sandwich. It's a hot roast beef rare sandwich with barbecue sauce, light barbecue sauce, um, mayo and cheese. It's called a roast beef three-way. You go to a roast beef place. Let me get a super beef three-way. It is amazing. It's like six or seven bucks. That is the most local thing you can do. If you go in there, you will be like, I am in blue collar Boston right now. I am like in Boston. You're not at illegal seafoods. You're not at, you know, a fancy restaurant. That's where like everyone goes to eat on a regular basis. It's like crazy comfort food. Anytime I would come home from Indie Ball or when, you know, when I was in college or traveling or anything, I call up my friend, Landon C is in Peabody. I'll, I'll just hit and see it's not in Boston. So I might get some crap for that, but there's a million places or um, roast beef and seafood. Just Google roast beef clips and and go there. I, I promise you, you'll love it. Oh, well, it's it's not even eleven o'clock here in California, and you just made me hungry for roast beef. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's yep. that's awesome. I'm really glad I asked. I have I I, uh, I definitely got to check that out next time I'm out in Boston. And, and speaking of which, I actually uh, I read. Yesterday, that uh, Big Poppy is now in like good condition at the hospital. Yeah, um, yep, I saw that, and I mean, you know, to, to to speak to that for like a second. Yeah. Um, you know, I talked about culture in Boston. Like that was like a dagger to Boston. I mean, we're so proud of Ortiz because he's such a like he's a humanitarian, he's a philanthropist. Um, he represented our city. Um, you know, through like the Boston bombing and everything. I have goosebumps right now thinking about his speech. And, um, and yeah, man, when he, he, he's just, I grew up with him obviously and you grew up with him, but, uh, but yeah, man, when, when we heard that, it was like, um, it was like something like a wave came over Boston, uh, cause he's so like near and dear to us, but yeah, he's, he's in good condition and, uh, you know, he feels like family to everybody just because we love him so much, but yeah, uh, that was wild. That was yeah. so crazy. I mean that, I think that like feeling, I mean, 
exemplifies what Boston is all about. I mean, once you're, once you are a Bostonian, like your family. And, uh, yeah. I, I think that's pretty cool. I think kind of, you know, not to be corny, but that comes off in plate crate too. It's like once, once you're, you know, with plate crate, you're kind of family. And I, I think, I think you guys treat your, I don't think they even are really customers. It's kind of just like clientele who, who really has the same, like you said, you, like you would be, this is your ideal product. If you were, you know, uh, you know, a kid or, a, you know, a ball player coming up. I mean, even a, even a grown ball player. I mean, yeah. What's super cool about, I mean, like you were saying how Boston kind of everyone is a family. I feel like, you know, not to be too corny, but I feel like that's how you're treating play crate in a way. It's that, you know, people who, who purchase the subscription with play crate, it's not necessarily a customer. It's more like a family. And I think that's due to the fact that you said you would have been your own, you know, best customer. Um, yeah. And I think there's something so cool about subscription boxes where, especially, especially with your guys. And I know I'm sure with a lot of other ones, but I can, I know for a fact with your guys, it's, uh, it's curated by people who, you know, love the game so much and, and really like are thoughtful and mindful of what, you know, these subscribers would, you know, be excited about getting in the box because it's what you would have been excited about getting in the box. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely true. Um, you know, I want, you know, our products, everything we could have marketing, we could have content, we could have paid ads, we can have sponsors. If you get a box, that's not something that you like genuinely just had a great time opening. And, uh, and not only that, but like, we want to make our products so good. We want to make play crate so much fun that you share with your teammates. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, that's one thing like from our perspective, if we don't have an amazing product, there's, you know, we don't deserve your business. That's number one. Um, so it, you know, it goes back to that thing. Like it's, it's on me. It's my fault. If someone cancels cause you don't think it's enough value, that's not your fault. That's my fault. You're a customer. Um, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, this is, I didn't know what people want at that age. And it's actually cause I was speaking with, um, like a potential partner, and uh, they were like, well, why don't you do some polls to ask what people want? I go, because people don't know what they want. Um, and uh, there's like a, they just don't. There's a, there's like an awesome TED Talk. Um, it's Malcolm Gladwell on spaghetti sauce. And basically, it's really like obscure, eclectic TED Talk on, um, on how uh, spaghetti sauce kind of came into being. Because it used to be like this really like thin, um, and I am really going off the deep end here. Um, but, uh, it used to be this really like thin, uh, chunky sauce, like very authentic Italian and, uh, and people said they liked it, but they didn't actually do it. So when they started testing thicker sauces like Prego, um, you know, people started liking it, but if you, they pulled people 10 times out of 10, they said they liked authentic Italian, but they didn't. So, um, you know, to bring that full circle, uh, wow. when I, yeah, when I, when I ask people what they want, they only tell me what they know. They don't know the same things that I know. They don't have. They don't sit in an office for eight hours a day thinking about um, baseball gear and how to how to you know manufacture and how to do all this stuff. So, um, you know, that's my job is to create something that you want that you didn't know you, want. and that's what makes a really great product. That's a really interesting aspect of it. I mean, because I mean, I never thought about it like that because that's your job to know. I mean, that's yeah. that's whereas you know, subscribers to the box theoretically are you know, in school, you know, half the day, then going to practice, like they don't have the time to know what they want. So they defer to someone like you. That's a really interesting point. I never really thought of it like that. Yeah. And I mean, we're going, we go to trade shows and we, we make our own stuff and we manufacture our own stuff. And, you know, I've, I've been in baseball retail, you know, the only things kids are exposed to are things that are, you know, in dicks or models or, you know, big box stores. And that's why we really try to put stuff in the boxes that, that you know, no one's heard of. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes it different. Um, and then we make a lot of our own things as well. Um, we do a lot of like limited edition things, cool designs, things like that. So you know, we want to be exclusive to play crate. We want people to get a play crate and say they had a great experience. They learned something. They have something that they can bring to the game. It's entertaining and it's fun and it's it, it's invigorating. You know, like it kind of reinvigorates you um, just as a baseball player. Um, you know, we were talking about energy at the beginning of the call. Um, yeah, we want, we want to bring that energy to the box every single month and we want people to open it and love it and share it and, uh, you know, be fans and teammates. Yeah.
Yeah, that's that's super awesome. I like the whole sharing aspect. I mean, because you know, baseball. That's I think that's what I always loved so much about baseball. I mean, we talked again. You know, you said we got we're we're going full circle with a lot of our points, but the camaraderie aspect of baseball, just being in the dugout, you know, shooting the you know what with the fellas or the gals, you know, at a softball game, straight up is is like one of the one of the most like awesome parts of baseball is like just the downtime that it allows and then like what you do in the downtime and like, you know, you have a cool plate, great box, you know, big shout out. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. then, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, seeds or, you know, a cool, unique uh, training tool or, you know, something to stretch out the fingers, anything like you could share it with your teammates and it's all inherently just like spreading throughout the community within like just, you know, one box and, and, you know, you have one teammate with the box, then two teammates with the box, and then it grows. Maybe the whole team is getting the box. So it's that's that's really awesome, and and uh, the value you provide is just like it's it it spreads naturally because of it. It's it's kind of an exponential thing. Yeah, and I mean it's it's, it's an extension of something I love. You know, what I mean? people love baseball. People want more of it. You know, people want more of it. It's an extension of you know something they love. It's a hobby. It's something they connect to, and um, you know to give them a little bit more. Um, you know, that's our job. We're trying to c cultivate a great community. You know what I mean? Uh, we want a place where baseball players can go after the field. They can talk about baseball. They can nerd out about baseball like I would have done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and be in a place where they can have fun discussions and interesting conversations and learn about gear and be connected with coaches and tournaments and teams um, and just kind of expand on, you know, their love for baseball on the field and off, off the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, especially, too, you know, uh, you know, in this day and age, I think it's really cool what you you are providing um, because you know it's kind of like a really like valuable thing at a very like reasonable cost too. I mean, everything right now is so expensive. Whether it's you know sending kids to showcases or just like, dude, like you know three hundred dollar gloves and bats and and you know just all the gear. And I think you're providing such a value at such a reasonable cost and you know, the value is also, just like you said, is baseball nerds are curating the box. So you're yeah. getting like inherent, like this gnarly knowledge of baseball nerds that, that really, I mean, you aren't really at it. You're, you're not taxing on the value for that. Um, but it's, it's providing it at such a low cost in a time when sports, like it's such a specialized thing. Like, you know, I know in basketball, it's AAU and baseball, it's travel ball and these showcases and and expensive gear and so it's awesome it's awesome i really have to commend you for that no i, I mean i appreciate you um you know conveying how much value it is and you know i do want I, I want people to know i want everyone to know like um you know you don't you know it, it is it is valuable the stuff that we put in the box is more valuable than how much we charge for it um but we want play crate to be a community we want to be all inclusive you don't have to subtract to play crate and that's like going against everything that I should be saying for marketing. Like, you don't have to uh, subscribe to be part of the community. Um, obviously, like, we want you to because you can engage more and you can more with it. Um, but we want PlayCrate to be a community where if you're a subscriber, if you're not a subscriber, if you just love baseball and you want to nerd out about baseball, sort of talk about baseball, um, you know, follow us, listen to our content, connect with people. Uh, maybe you want to give away or some T-shirts or something. We just want it to be something really fun, an extension of people's uh, love for baseball. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I that's something that goes full circle to like I look, I I'm on Instagram and in different sports communities and you know, I, I just have to again, the baseball community is so wild and there's so many like it's so it's so many people like nerding out in such a fun way like of just like discussions about like, you know, does the tie go to the runner? Or do the rules actually state that? Because I mean, uh -huh. technically, you know, you have to beat the ball to the bag is if to first base is actually the rule is in my regard. But it's so funny, like just to like see the discussions that happen on there and just the passion that people have for the sport and like what what it means to them. And and it's it's so it's so powerful. And uh, I, I really do love that. And like you said, it, it creates a community. And I think you guys have done a really awesome job of that, like of, you know, you know, people like baseballologist, uh, big shout out, um, to amazing, amazing person. Yeah, exactly. Um, to cultivate, like, you know, he's a, he's a great person to be, you know, an awesome representative of what you guys are all about and what you guys do. And I think 
that that's just like a perfect example of what you know ig and and that stuff has really provided for you and all of us who are on there like promoting stuff in, a, in an awesome way and and like you said to paint something as good or bad is is so simple but you can make such like awesome connections and, and beautiful representations of what you're about and what your company's about via social media yeah yeah, yeah and like like we said before, it's an extension of, of what we're trying to convey, you know, with mission, our vision uh, for Play Crate, and just in that community, man. It's, we just want people to, to be to have a place they're comfortable with and, um, you know, to kind of add to them. Um, you know, you, you have more appreciation for something when you know about it. So, yeah. you, know, if you, you know, if you're a chef um, and you learn about cuisine and everything, you can really appreciate good chef's night. You know what I mean? But if you have, if you know nothing about cooking, you're going to get the cheapest chef's knife. So it's really fun to kind of watch the evolution of people who are really getting into the nitty gritty of hitting mechanics and um, kind of like the new wave of, uh, of hitting. And I love talking with these kids, but the more you study it, the more you learn, the more respect you have for baseball, the more you appreciate it. And then, you know, the more you can pass that passion on to, to friends and family and, and you can, you have the ability to share that more. So, um, you know, I want to, I want to continue that. It's just another way of giving back well, is let's learn, uh, so we can cultivate that appreciation so we can share the game with people we love. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that's, that's a really, that's a really, uh, good way of putting it. Um, and you know, <laughs> yeah, baseball is such a terrific sport. I have to ask you as you know, I'll put you on the spot right now again. So ba yeah. let's go, let's go. How about what's, what's your favorite baseball movie? I, it doesn't uh, have to be one. Let's yeah, you know. Let's say you could give you could give three, but if you have to, you know, if I you know if I hypothetically put the gun to the head and you know you have to pick one. If if it had to be the last baseball movie I've ever watched, it would definitely be Field of Dreams. Uh huh. It has to be Field of Dreams. It's like it's a family movie for us. Um, yeah, I mean, I watched that so many times, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm a crier. I'll cry in movies. I just bawl my eyes out of that movie. I I love it. It's like so like over the top. Like such a love for like the game baseball. Beautifully written. Jake Brook Jones is iconic in it. Uh, Fenway Park's in it. So <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, and I would have to say like Sandlot has to be a close second because <laughs> it, like you don't quote. Field of Dreams, you quote Sandlot, you wear the Sandlot, um, you know, swag. So, uh, but I'd have to say, like, best best baseball movie is Field of Dreams. Like, if you haven't seen Field of Dreams, like, go find it tonight, watch it, uh, and you'll have the same thing, like, a, another level of appreciation for just baseball as a whole. And probably Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you're right. No, that one, I, I'm, I'll admit to crying, uh, watching, <laughs> watching Field of Dreams. If you don't cry... At least, if you don't at least think about shedding a tear, you don't have a soul while watching that movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm fully behind you on that. Yeah, um, that's uh, that's that's always that's always a, a fun one to ask. Um, and then the other, I always like to ask as a ball player. Um, this is one that you know is I like to tread lightly because some players like to keep it more under the belt. But uh, I have to ask: Did you have any uh, interesting or funny? pre-game routines or superstitions that you would engage in? I know most ball players do. You know what? So I I was not superstitious. Wow. I, I was not superstitious at all because I wanted, like, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a weird thing for me. <laughs> I wanted to be super in control of everything. And superstitions, is, you're like a slave to them. So, you know, I, I'm not superstitious. Like in, in real life, I'm not superstitious on the baseball field, but I was like, you know what? I don't care what bat I have. I don't care what glove. Like, well, my glove, no. My glove. I was like super anal about my glove. Like, no one touched my glove. It's broken in. It goes this way, it travels with me. I was like very much like a middle infielder. No one touched my stuff. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I wanted to be able to perform kind of anywhere. So I did no pregame rituals. And I tried really hard to not let myself get into that because then you're a slave to them. You know what I mean? And I'm, uh, I kind of want to turn that on its head. Baseball players are like known to be super, super, super superstitious. Um, 
or uh, like the Michael Michael Scott quote. I'm not superstitious. I'm just a little, just a little bit stitious. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I had no pregame rituals. I will say, like in college, though, I had to take a shower after BP before the game. I needed to be clean. You know what I mean? And I'm not like a clean freak. Like I'm generally like just a good hygiene person. But like after BP in Florida, like no matter what, I had to take a shower, fresh clothes, fresh sliders. I want to go out to that field feeling like fresh. And uh, I just didn't get when people get so sweaty in BP for like two hours on the field playing catch, stretching, running. And then they would go just change in their uniform. I'm like, dude, you're going to be in that uniform for like four hours. Like feel fresh, feel professional, feel like energized. Um, so yeah, I mean that, and I just had to have my food. I like, I need, I had like snacks in the dugout. I had seeds. I had sandwiches in the dugout. I had everything. I needed food at all times. I would eat every single inning of the game. I just, really? I had to eat. Yeah. Once that hunger bug starts in you, like you can't get it out of your head. And I'm like, I, w- I don't want the hunger rolling around in my head during a game. I want to concentrate on the game. That's so. interesting. I mean, I, I, I think that's kind of the similar thing of what you said by kind of like negating superstitions. It's like you don't want to add that extra variable like of, yeah. of complication to what's already a, a chess game, frankly. Um, yeah. You know, to have anything but, you know, what I need to do if the ball comes to me here or if I need to back this guy up if it, you know, like there's so many, there's so many nuances to baseball. I really do think, I mean – I know this might be me, my bias taking over a little bit, but I think it is probably the most nuanced game, a uh, nuanced like major professional game uh, that we, you know, that we have um, just yeah. because of the pure, the pure like downtime in between every, you know, play. There's so many opportunities for the field to shift or, you know, a- anything. And, and, and there's so many just different scenarios of what can happen. I mean, <clears throat> NFL is very, you know, very nuanced as well in terms of like the linemen doing this. But I mean, I, I, there's not as much downtime where it's like the clock is, is you know, is, is still running in between, you know, plays. Yeah. Whereas I know there's a play clock now in baseball of times in between the pitch, but it's not quite yeah. the same. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's not a rah-rah game. Like, yeah, like it's fun. It's like energy definitely helps, but um like you can't get angry. Like people in football, you're like I'm gonna get angry. I'm gonna run through these people. Basketball, I'm gonna take the ball. I'm gonna. But like baseball, <laughs> like the harder you try, the worse you do. Kind of thing. You just need to be locked in and like and just consistent. Like consistent, 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 consistent. Um, that's the hardest part. Is not going, to, not going too high, not going too low. Which is a little bit of generic advice, but like it's so true. My like the players that I used to look up to, like. I'm like, why don't you guys care? And they're like, it's not that I care. They're like, it's just a long season. <laughs> like, they're like, I don't care. I go 0 for 10. Like, of course, like I'm frustrated, but I'm like, they're like, we're doing everything right. It's like, it, it's fine. It'll buff out. I and mean, we actually I had a teammate that always used to say, it'll buff out. And that kind of came like our team motto, it'll buff out. But, um, but yeah, you, it, it's not a sport like where you can use aggression. It's a sport where you need to kind of take a step back and kind of calm down and, and refocus. It's like a sport of refocusing, refocus, refocus. Like you said before, begin. I think yeah. I think that kind of plays into the business aspect right there of what you said. I mean, uh, it's really not what hits you, it's how you respond. And I mean, I definitely, I mean, my favorite ball players of all time, you know, guys like Tony Gwynn, Cal Ripken. Uh, I mean, you know, I was even watching just like a, an off one uh, who's on the Padres now is uh, Will Myers. He just never seems to be like excited or angry. And I used to get frustrated by it. I literally, as a fan, I used to be like, why doesn't he seem like he cares? And someone told me exactly what you just said who, who played ball. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm I'm a complete layman to this because I didn't, I, I didn't even see that. And I was like, wow, he's actually doing himself way more of a service overall. Of yeah. just kind of just staying on that, like you said, and never getting too high, never getting too low. And I think within business, it's the same. I mean, you can have a great partnership, or you can produce some great content that might not have, you know, as many views as the thirty-second content that you post on your phone. I mean, I've found time and time again that you, you know I'll do a post that I think is gonna take the world by storm, and then it gets you know seventy views, and then I'll just do a goofy one of me sitting here doing a selfie and it'll get 400 views. I mean, it's so funny. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's people, people just, 
you know, smell inauthenticity. You know what I mean? Yep. They just, the, <clears throat> like the harder I try to make great content, just the worse it gets. But I, <laughs> I want camera, I go, this is the office. This is my dog, Penny, who's with me every day. This is what we're doing. Um, people are like, oh, like he's a normal person. I can relate to him. Um, you know, I trust him because he's in front of the camera. He's actually showing me what's going on. They appreciate that. You know, I hope that does come across. So I want people to see this and say, oh, like I feel a little connection to Josh and Play Crate and their mission and what they're doing. Um, you know, come check us out and, uh, you know, see what we're about. And, you know, we'd be happy to have you. But, yeah, the, the more honest you are, the more genuine you are, people just can, like, tell right away. And then they can tell the people who are, you know, they're, they're putting out content just to get likes and just to get, um, you know, follows. And they're trying to – and they're pandering. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's just much easier to be yourself and, and be, be honest. It totally is. It totally is, and it, and it, you know what? It's 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 better, and it's also easier, frankly, too. I mean, but uh, yeah, that's I guess that's one of the uh, you know the negative sides of social media. Of course, it allows for that uh, that that you know the mask, so called, to be put on, and yeah. uh, you know I, I you know I think it's really great what you guys do, and I, you know I want to give you the opportunity now to you know I mean I, have there been any like any like funny anecdotes about like you know the the development that you could tell or any you know and and then any shout outs you want to give definitely um you know i, I want to and and of course let people know where they could find you we got to po uh, put that up we'll put all the stuff in the description of the video of course as well yeah yeah um i mean in terms of funny anecdotes i mean there's i'm trying to think of like one in particular i mean there's a bunch i mean we've had like a such like our own like unique journey with play crate. Um, I used to live in a batting cage. Um, it <laughs> really? Was, it was, it, yeah. Yeah. When I was playing indie ball, I lived in a batting cage. That's and play crate started out of the trunk of my car. Um, wow. and then, uh, and then I was in a batting cage. So we're shipping like hundreds of boxes out of this, like, um, you know, little office. I, my, I had, a, I had an office above a gas station for a little while. <laughs> so I was like in, in an office working on play crate with this like accountant gas station lady. Um, you know, looking back, it's just like the funny part is just, it's like, it's just, just so ridiculous. I like talk to people who did really well in business and people I trusted and they're like, Josh, that's just the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Really? And, uh, yeah, man, I go to trade shows and, and, um, you know, there was this guy, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. I'm not going to name his name. Uh, but he has this really, really successful baseball business and, uh, I met him like two years ago, and I went up to him, and I told him about play crate. I was like, I have this box of baseball gear, and it's this and it's that. And he's like, all right, whatever, little guy. And uh, I came back, and he's like, Josh, how you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm great. He asked me about like uh, like our subscribers, our revenue. And he's like, what is going on? He's like, you need an investor. And he like, gave me a nookie. And uh, I was like, dude, it's, uh, you know, it was something that definitely, you know, I just always, I always knew there was a market for it. I've always believed in it. Um, and then kind of the market just edifies that is, yeah. you know, the more we grow, the better, you know, the more we learn and solve for X with problem solving and, um, you know, make the product better, cultivate the community, like all these like little things that we're working on are starting to be pieced together. Um, you know, so, you know, I'm really proud of what we have. It still seems like we're just like, it still seems like I'm in like the batting cage because we're still just kind of in front of the computer, same thing. The dog still comes to the office. Um, so from my perspective, <laughs> It doesn't feel like it's really changed. It's, it feels like things are starting to come together and things are starting to make more sense. Um, but yeah, like the whole the whole thing's funny. Like there's been a million. We've had a post office that lost like 500 boxes one time. Uh, just going through that, we've had 500. Um, yeah, man. When I tell you, we I mean we've been we've been around for a little while now. We've gone through some like stuff, and once again it's my fault. Like all of this is my fault. When the post office loses 500 boxes, that's my fault. That was a tough one to blame on me. But <laughs> but it's still, you know, it's, it's me and it, it kind of, it works in reverse when everything's your fault. Um, you know, you have permission to fix it. So, um, good point. Yeah. Uh, there's a million, there's a million funny things. I don't even know. Just like people we've met, um, you know, things coming full circle around, uh, companies we've worked with. It's just been, you know, it's been a really fun four years. I'm looking forward to the next few years as well. Um, but yeah. And then, I mean, to answer your other question where people can like find us and learn more about us, I mean, playcrate.com, www.platecrate.com. 
Um, we'll put that across so, the screen for them as always. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, in a plate. So everyone thinks it's play. It's plates, like a home plate, and then crate. Um, follow us on Instagram, at plate crate. Um, and, and that's it. I mean, reach out to us. Ask questions. Um, I'll answer you. Chris is our customer service guy. He'll answer you. Michelle, she'll answer you. Um, we want to talk to you. We want to hear oh, yeah. uh, you know, your feedback. We want to hear what you think about the box, good and the bad. Um, you know, we learn the most from from people who just hate us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> everyone, but, you know, when someone really is rude and they're like, this is horrible. You guys are like all these bad things. And I'm like, thank you so much for that. And they take a step back and they're like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> um, but luckily, you know, almost everyone is, is very kind and very sweet and uh, and has really nice things to say about Playcrate. But um, yeah, go check us out at Playcrate on Instagram. We're always there. We're coming out with lots of content. Uh, we have themed boxes every month now. So there's a different theme. To, this month is Sea Ball. So we have like a really cool three-quarter length shirt um, and like all these really cool products this month. Um, but yeah, I'd say, you know, if you have a question, don't be shy, reach out, ask a question. Uh, we'd love to, to get in touch with you and, um, and just, you know, connect with, with other baseball lovers. Yeah, absolutely. And I, dude, I do have to ask, I mean, this is, I mean, this is going to be kind of an arbitrary question. Where did the name, I mean, of course, yeah, home plate, but where did the name kind of get its inception from plate crate? Yeah. So I, <laughs> I had like a talk with someone earlier. They asked me like where I got it and it, so I, I had the idea for this in like two like 2014 and I had like the worst working title ever. I was like, I got to call it something while I work on it. And it was called my ba my baseball subscription addiction. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's pretty good. It, it's just too long. It was horribly like long, like insane. And I always knew I was like, all right, this isn't what's going to work. And, um, <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was the girl, um, you know, I'm dating, uh, Catherine, um, She's got just she got great eye for branding and just like very intuitive with these things. And mm -hmm. she was like, "That's terrible! Like, don't." <laughs> ever do that. Um, so we came like we had like batter's box, but then I was like, you know what? There's nothing like fun about that. It's not differentiated, and uh, and I couldn't get the URL, so it was batter's dash box. Um, so I'm like, you know, what? I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. I want something that's much more unique, much more us that we can, um, you know, you know, put all of our like mission, vision, values, all the things that we want on a, on a, a name that no one else has. Mm -hmm. uh, batter's Box could be anything. There's batting cages named that. There's other things like named Batter's Box. We just don't, we want to be our own entity. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was as much as we came, I came up with a, just a list of baseball words and then a list of, of, uh, of uh, synonyms for box. That was it. And then I just mix matched them. And then when we said play create out loud, I was like, that is really good. And, uh, and it just stuck. It, I loved it from the beginning. Um, I got, you know, you just get goosebumps, um, you know, when you have it. And then, you know, when you see, you, we, we had a, you know, a designer start doing out logos and a branding package for us. And, uh, and yeah, when I saw the logos, it just, it, you know, it felt, it felt really, really good. So it was a good starting point, but yeah, no, nothing crazy, but I'm really glad we're talking about play crate, not my baseball subscription addiction. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, I mean, I think that shows, I mean, the ability to, yeah, you know, you've said one thing that you have kept articulating is that, you know, you never can know too much. And like, I think, you know, often the most dangerous person in the room is the person who thinks that they have all the answers. And, uh, you know, you're willing to admit that you didn't have all the answers and that's what's led to a successful company. Yeah. Oh man. I still, I still don't have the answers. Like, <laughs> I, there's still so much to learn. There's like, you can never stop, ever, ever stop learning. Um, it's what's fun about the business. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, making money, and this is passion, you know, for paychecks and turning passion to professions. Um, you know, the, the money just validates what you're doing is, is working. It's an objective measurement. That's all it is. Um, that what you're learning is actually put into practice and, uh, and you're solving the puzzle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your business is a puzzle. You need to you need to tweak it. You need to solve for X. You need to find ish, um, you know solutions to different problems that are really hard. Uh, the fun part is learning about it and um, and appreciating. It. And like I said before about the chef and the chef knife, and you know the more you learn about business, the more you can appreciate it. And then it's just like another scope of your life that's that's a hobby and something you love. So 
like in my free time, you know, I, I, I love reading about other people's businesses. I love listening to podcasts like yours. And uh, it's fun because it adds value to my life and it adds value to hopefully the people around me. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, <clears throat> I think what you just said means that, you know, not only does Play Crate continue to grow, but it also continues to evolve, improve, uh, find new avenues for success and find new avenues of providing people a really, uh, you know, unique way to nerd out on baseball and add value to their knowledge and their, you know, their game in general. Um, yeah. Because, you know, if you guys are always striving to improve, that means the boxes are always going to continue to improve. And the thing is, you already have a great product. And now to think that you're going to continue to build on it is just, that's really awesome. And that's, that, that, that's special. Yeah. We'll, we'll never stop trying to make the product better. Ever, ever, mm -hmm. ever. We'll keep adding to it. We're going to add new designs. Uh, we're manufacturing all this different stuff. We're just going to keep uh, we're just going to keep going. And I mean, that's, uh, that's part of the business. You have, you have to evolve. Uh, play crate is completely different than I ever thought it would be. We've changed our pricing structure. We've changed our box. We've changed, um, you know, our strategy a thousand times, but, um, you know, similar to baseball, you, you need to make those adjustments. You need to kind of refocus, um, a lot and recalibrate, um, you know, what you're doing. So, um, that's the fun part. And, you know, the more you do it, the more you, you have, you know, appreciation for it. So, yeah, exactly, exactly, and I mean, hey, that that's you know that means good things for uh for the subscribers and the future subscribers. That's big things to come, and I think I mean the 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 great thing also is I mean we didn't we didn't touch on this fully, but I mean this leaves us you know the opportunity to come back again. But uh, I I think it's also really cool like the teaming how you guys team up with uh, companies, and <clears throat> in that sense you know like it's just like this natural relationship that you have with companies where they where companies see your box as a medium to provide you know other other you know avenues for their uh you know clients and such and i think that's just so cool that you get to just team up with people in the baseball community like whether it's manufacturers or uh or personalities or just people who play ball yeah and i mean that's <clears throat> the fun part about play trade is you did kind of create our own um, you know, our own product. We have no competitors. We like, we, it, it just opens up the world to work with everybody. And, um, and that's the best when you have a win for us, a win for our vendors and our partners, and then a win for the, you know, the, con the consumers and the customers, obviously. Um, but like, that's how you set things up, you know, make, uh, you need to make the other people, um, heroes and their own hero journey. And, help them on their path and then find a way that you can coincide and, and bring value to that. And, and you got a business, you know what I mean? And you know, you'll figure out how to monetize, you figure out how to make money. That's, that's really not the important thing. You need to find something that adds value to other people and, and helps them in their hero's journey. I, I couldn't agree more. And you know, that's part of what we try to do on the podcast. So I, I I'm, I'm a fully on board with that vision. And uh, I, I think, I think, you know, it's it's pulling the ladder down for people rather than picking it up after you've gotten there and uh you know I, that's i appreciate your time so much because of that and i like seriously uh um you, you you're adding so much value to our program and i i am getting to share your story so it's like you said win 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 you know the dunder yeah. mifflin <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love all the office quotes um yeah it's you know working together we're, we're all trying to do the same thing uh, you know, we're all trying to have, you know, you know, just a great life from day to day. And, um, you know, I hope I brought some value to, to your listeners oh, yeah. and I really want to share this podcast with my listeners. I hope they come and they can, they can learn and, um, and yeah, we'll all, we'll all grow together. Absolutely. And that's that, you know, that's a perfect point for me to say, uh, uh, any, any shout outs you want to give. And I also want to say that's a perfect point for me to also say, uh, one of our taglines is, uh, synergy is winnergy. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, any any shout outs you want to give? Uh, again, I, I know uh, find them on playcrate.com. Follow them at playcrate. That's P L A T E C R A T E. Um, but um, any shout outs you want to give? Any upcoming things that you want to tease for us? And then uh, you know, finally, the always you know, I know we've talked about it in droves ad nauseum, uh, but. Any advice out there for anyone who wants to turn their passion into a paycheck? But also, uh, you know, shout outs and anything you got coming up that you, the mic is yours. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely shout outs. Um, my, my team that's here today, Michelle, 
um, and Chris. Absolutely amazing people. Um, I'm not just saying it because because uh, they're going to listen to this. Um, you know, I, I love I love being around them, um, and it really you know don't want to do this by yourself. It's not fun. You want to you want to share it. So I'm glad I get to share. You know, play create with them and play create with them and them you know with me. Um, you know, and I'm I'm super happy that that they work for me. You know, it's it's a it, it really is a privilege that you know we get to have fun every day and and uh, and just be friends and work together. Um, and while we're at it, baseball, I mean, just like at baseballologist, go follow him. Um, he's the first professional baseball fan. Is 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 how he's branding himself. And um, and he's a big supporter of us and play create. And same thing, I just couldn't be more appreciative him for doing that and um he's just such a genuine guy he sincerely cares about the lights going off again um <laughs> uh about baseball and the baseball community and it's just such like an inspiring passion for it that it's just hard to not feed off of his energy so go follow him you know on social media you'll be like this guy is awesome i've, t- I've had a million conversations with him on the phone text he's the, he's the same he's absolutely an amazing person so um yeah, I mean, I could I could sit here and t- tell you all my friends' names, but those those are the three that are uh, that are on the tip of my tongue. Um, so thank you to all of them. Um, yeah, and yeah, say so if you know if you, if you're a business owner, if you're in your you're in the beginning stage, middle stages, um, you know, we talked about beginning earlier, but I mean, it's just solving for X. There's always a problem. Your problem might be one that you make. It might be like we need more. Rep- that's a problem. We need more customers. That's a problem. Um, but you need to solve for that. You know what I mean? And um, you need to take a step back and say, you know, what's the one thing in my business? Um, you know, what's the thing that's going to make everything else easier or erupt? Um, that comes from a Gary Keller book. Uh, but it's just solving for X, figuring out that puzzle. Um, there's always something you can find. There's always something you can fix. There's always something you can make better with. always something you could do. Um, you know, to help your consumers and add more value to them, make them the hero in their company. So I would just say keep solving problems. Just keep solving problems. Come into work every day. Sit down at 8 o'clock. We'll at 5 or 6 o'clock. If a friend wants to get lunch, have lunch with the friend. That's why you became an entrepreneur. Freedom. Um, but then get back to work. Sit in front of your computer. Sit on your note and just solve problems. And, and there you go. You're a business owner. That's awesome. I... I- I love that. I love that's, that's a very like succinct way to put a, uh, a very unique, uh, a unique lifestyle, frankly. Um, and, uh, I I really appreciate your time, uh, Josh, and I I really appreciate what you folks do at Plate Crate. And, uh, you know, I know, I know not only the baseball community appreciates it, the subscription box community appreciates it, but you know, now all our listeners and viewers can appreciate it too, whether, you know, whether they're subscribers or not, because, uh, what you guys do is just so genuine and it's providing such a unique and uh, really awesome value to people. So I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you folks for uh, listening to another episode of the Oddcast podcast where we talk to people like Josh who are turning their passion into profession and subsequently their passion into paychecks. And again, platecrate.com. Follow them on Plate Crate on Instagram, and you can follow us at the Oddcast Podcast. Everything's separated by an underscore, and the Oddcast dot live. That's dot l i v e. And thank you, folks, so much. And uh, we really appreciate your time. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little odd. Those sounds you like to hear. We got it going on. It's the Oddcast. It's the Oddcast. It's the Oddcast. It's the Oddcast.